Hello. <laughs> good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing? It's good to be back. We're, yeah, we were on vacation. Yeah, in fact, I think they have a picture of us. I sent one. I sent one to Frenzy. Is it out there? They want to show it. We, we went as a family to the beach. Yes, sir. And we got a lot of sun and surf and ate a lot of food, and it was, it was a great time. But it was great to be back. So thanks, y'all, for, you know, letting us go. And it's yeah. a great time. You feel rested? Rested. We're resting. So yeah, we're right back at it. A lot going on. Yep. And we want you to know you never get bored around here. <laughs> I know I never get bored around here. <laughs> Although I didn't, you know, we, we ha I used to have a pastor friend yeah. who his saying was when he went on vacation, he would say that he would burn up on re-entry. He's like, yeah, when I try to re-entry ministry, you burn up. But I didn't have that experience. No. So it's been nice. So there we it. are. There there we, we are. are on the beach. Little Joseph was with us. We had we had a great time. It was a lot of fun. Very much relaxing. You yeah. even relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Anyway, we have got great things to talk about, and um, we have some things that are going to help you in your walk with God. I believe that the walk we have with the Lord, especially in these days, we need to really be circumspect with how we deal with our lives. And uh, everything that's going on in our world today, it's so upside down, back to front, inside out. Um, but we as believers have got to realize we have the power within us to bring about change. And change happens when we go to God. And I was just, uh, I shared this a bit on Wednesday. I got a fresh revelation about prayer. You say, well, you know about prayer, but yeah, you know it, but... I need to hear about prayer every day. <laughs> but there's prayer. Uh, I, was, I was just, this, this scripture just leapt out of me, 1 Kings 8, about Solomon praying to the Lord about the tent, about the tent. About the <laughs> <laughs> he has tent on the, the brain. The, the temple. <laughs> and so what came to me was this. God answers prayer. And I got a scripture for you. You say, well, I know that. Yeah, I know you know that, but you need to know it better. It's found out of James 5.15. And I want to just read this to you. Out of the, um, this is out of the Passion Translation. It says this. Um, actually, it's verse 14, not 15. Are there... Um, I'll go up, Bill. There you go. Oh, I got it. Oh, verse... No, 
13. <laughs> They're not searching for it. It's okay. Okay, it's in the book of James somewhere. <laughs> somewhere in James it says this. 5.13. It says, Are there any believers in your fellowship suffering great hardship and distress? Now, that's a great question. Yeah. Are there hard times? I think the King James says, hard times. You know, you're suffering, maybe it's persecution, suffering, whatever it is. You're up against stuff. And it seems like that nothing's happening and it's painful. He says, is, are there any believers in your fellowship suffering great hardship and distress? Question mark. You say, yeah, that's me. What's the answer? God gives the next line. Here's the answer. You ready for it? Sit down. Take notes. You want to get this? Encourage them to pray. That's God's answer. Pray. Why? Because when you pray in the name of Jesus, God hears you. And there's a song we sing. Uh, even when it doesn't seem like He's moving or He's working, He still is. Yeah. He's, he's at work. And I guess the revelation is this, is that every prayer uttered to the Father in the name of Jesus, or every prayer you pray in the Spirit is having an impact yes, for your good Amen. in your life. And Jesus said men are always to pray and not to faint, give in, quit, roll over, play dead. Because in the natural, if you let your mind work, and I know sometimes, I'll be honest with you, when, especially with prayers, there's certain prayers you pray for the weather, and the weather is answered that week. <laughs> you pray for a supply, it's answered that month. But the, but the longer ones are, you know, you're praying for a loved one, and it's been years. Mm -hmm. Or you've been praying for a move of God in your family's life, and it's been years. Or you pray even for sickness that it seems like it's nothing much is happening. And I think about Smith Wigglesworth. You know, we always look at the man of faith, all the miracles. Yet he himself, for seven years of his life, fought yeah, the worst true. case of kidney stones. He said he'd have a healing service and then go back to his room and writhe in pain delivering these kidney stones. By the way, whenever he'd pass one, he'd collect it. He collected all the stones and put them in a bottle. And I think he had like 178 oh, stones that he passed. But eventually, after seven years, it lifted, completely lifted. I think about Marilyn Hickey. She had very yellow, brownish teeth, and they couldn't really fix her teeth without putting an enamel on it or something. So she stood in faith that, Lord, you'll make my teeth white. And she stood in that for five years. And then instantly, well, she went one day to the brush her teeth, and they were all white. Now think about the molars I had, the impacted molars. Wisdom teeth, I should say, and the doc. I saw the pictures, the x-rays. They were inside, upside down. They were really sorry looking. He said, these definitely need to come out. And I heard this man testify about how God healed his wisdom teeth. He went to God. I think it was in a worship service. It's out worshiping God. I asked him. I felt, and I went home, and my wisdom teeth were completely straight and no pain. I said, you know what? God, if you did it for him, you can do it for me. And so I went to God. God, would you correct my wisdom teeth as a matter of prayer? And I remember a week went by. His, his happened like that same night. I'm thinking the same thing happened to me, you know. <laughs> one night, two nights, one week, two weeks. Then a month. Then another month. And then another month. And then another month. You know, and your head would say, I don't know this prayer is working. Really. I mean, use the protocol of the dentist and go and get your wisdom teeth corrected. Now, it's, on things like this, it's a personal thing. I would never tell someone, someone don't, else to do that. don't get yeah. your wisdom teeth fixed. You can do it by faith because it has to be your faith in your life. Don't put suffering on somebody else. But for me personally, it was a contention of faith that I would see my teeth get straight. And so I just stood there, stood there, stood there, and literally it was like, Either between nine months and a year of me standing that 
I was in this place. I think God's got a sense of humor. I've said this before. If you go to a church, you've heard this, uh, this uh, testimony. Say, I know how this ends. Don't turn me off. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm working for the railroad as a brakeman. And we would then stay at different hotels along the line. We'd park the train, get off. We'd put a new crew on. And we would call, get another train the next day. So I'm in this hotel. Oh, it's a motel. In Streeter, Illinois, in the main street, little Midwest town. And they said, it's called the Plum Line Hotel. And I'm walking down the street. I got my little satchel for my clothes. I'm, I'm by myself. And I'm walking down the street. And I can see it in neon lines. It says Plum Line Hotel. And as they, in the Plum Line was in red. And the neon was in like blue. And had a long line. And had the Plum Line Bob. You know, the Plum Line Bob is a weight for the string they used for Everything to do with the construction, be sure things are level. That's how they did it for antiquity. If you want to get a level, use the plumb bob. So I said, that's an unusual name. I pull into the vestibule, like the lobby, and it's an old hotel. I mean, it built, God knows, in the 20s. It's all got that bead, beadboard on the walls, on the ceiling. It's all done in like aqua green, oh, and nice. white, um, and gray. Gray floors, wood floors painted gray. So I, I go in, and then the lobby is, is sloped up, like about a 20-degree angle. I, like you walk up to the desk. I said, is this, is this, I mean, what's going on with this hotel? They said, this hotel has been here for how many years, and it's settled, and so the walls and the wall, floors have moved around, but it's still functional and safe, and we use it. I said, okay. And I said, I'm going to check my room in. Okay, here it is. So I go down the hall. The hall is leaning, like you got to walk sideways to look yourself. You got to walk, you got to cantilever your feet to keep straight. And I started laughing. So the plumb line was a joke. It's like a plumb line was a joke. <laughs> it was a parody. It was no more plumb than a cat's tail is plumb. So I go into my room, open the door, and the whole floor slopes up. And I'm going, this place is crazy. But in that crazy place, that night when I got up, when I went to sleep, God must have done a miracle in my teeth. He said, you know what? His, his teeth are out of line, but in the Plum Line Hotel, which really was not a Plum Line at all, I wake up and everything is, is like, a, like a wall between the bed and the bathroom because the bathroom is like half the room and the bed's the other half. And this beadboard sink, old-timey sink, little tiny mirror hanging on the wall. I'm brushing my teeth. And I'm looking like this. And I dropped my toothbrush in the bowl because what I saw, I could hardly believe. Oh, my mouth was wide. All my teeth were straight in line. Even my back molars were, were completely lined up. Everything was in line. And uh, I started weeping. I said, Lord, you answered my prayer. But it was the better part of a year. Mm. And I just want to let you know, when you're up against hard times, when you pray, God hears you. Yes. He hears you. And when He hears you, He's now beginning to move on your behalf. So I want to say this, because it, it ministers to me, because I've got so many things I'm pushing against. It's like this assurance that when I'm talking to God, I need to be specific. I need to be definite. I need not to waver. The Bible says a double-minded man, same book of James, is unstable in all his ways. Because the Lord said, you got to believe I, when, when I hear your prayer, and I do hear. Solomon would say in 1 Kings 8, God in heaven, we know that you are listening to us now from your throne. He was very aware. He just made that so real. And that these are the prayers we're asking. When this happens, you'll do this. When this happens, you'll do that. Every time. And that was a man with the old covenant. If we are in the new, how much stronger is our prayer life? Yes. And what an advantage we have because we have the power of the Holy Spirit to help us pray. But when you face adversity, the answer from heaven is pray. When a church faces adversity, the answer is pray. Mm. And I'll say this. The greater the adversity, the more the prayer. We need to pray more. Pray more. Pray in faith. Pray in persistence. 
pray in diligence, pray unceasing, the Bible talks about, because that is the lever that will push off the burden off your life. And it's coming off. You cannot stay in faith, believing God, without God moving on your behalf. Period. Full stop. You've got to get that down in you. So understand, some prayers will not be answered tomorrow. Most. Some, <laughs> what? Most. Yeah, really. Yeah. They're not, you know, it's like most healings are not instantaneous. They're over a period yeah. of time. But if you doubt and begin to waver because of circumstantial evidence of not seeing the answer, then you'll let go of the rope and start talking against what you just prayed. Yes. That's being double-minded. Mm -hmm. And then you lose. So it's that consistency, that perseverance. But I love it. When you, let me just say it again. Are there any believers in your fellowship suffering great hardship and distress? Question mark. Encourage them to pray. I love it. You know, we, we get glib in our walk with God, even perhaps religious. We use the words, prayer changes things, but it really does. Uh, when all else fails, pray. That's like a joke. But no, actually, it's reality. Yeah. And in these days we live in, it's going to be increased prayer. Hence, I want to lead something. On Saturday, from 12 to 1, we have one hour. Tomorrow. Which is tomorrow, on prayer. Pastors 100. I'll be there. I'll have others there. And I just encourage you to come. We're going to be praying about some particular subjects. But one of the topics we're going to pray more than any other is the July 3rd. And July 3rd is our way of using a big day where we celebrate our independence to reach out to our community and draw them to us. So we're doing a lot of things to prepare for that. But the greatest thing is prayer. So I'm putting together a prayer schedule for the last week of June. I'm going to assign staff for 6 a.m. prayer, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm going to do some myself. We have noon prayer from 12 to 1, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We have a Friday evening prayer. We're going to just, I'm going to lay it all out, and I'm going to ask people to pray and fast for that day, because I believe it's going to be a very special day. We have our 20 years anniversary of being doing uh, honoring our heroes, which is honoring all the civil servants, those of fire, police, as well as all the military that stand in harm's way for our protection of freedom. And there's so much hogwash, is the only way I can put the word, complete hogwash in our schools, in the media, in the high-tech industry, Complete hog wash. No truth in what they're saying on, when it comes to our nation. When you say America is evil, when you are into wokeism, you are smoking some pretty strong weed and your head is in the clouds. The reality is our nation was built on Christian values. Its foundation are biblical. Yes, we didn't do everything right, but you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. How stupid can you be? So part of what we're doing on these celebrations of 20 years is to try and uh, instill respect for our nation, gratitude, and thanksgiving for all those who stood for freedom. And if you say, yeah, I don't appreciate it, well then move to Russia, stay there for a year, and tell me how you like it. How you like it. Or move to Red China and live there for a year and tell me how you like it. There is no freedom the, the, the amount of freedoms we have in this nation are unique, but they're based on Jesus Christ. He is the source of freedom. So the July 3rd is a multifaceted event. Number one, we want to educate our youth, educate our children, and even re-educate our adults who suck on the lie bottle long enough and they get their own mind distorted. And so we've got to wash it off with the, with the, with the word and with truth and then reach out with our arms to bring all those that are looking for a special day to celebrate. As a matter of fact, um, Jimmy Mayo, who's heading up, we got a big outdoor stage you're setting up. I say, Jimmy Mayo, 
I need a stage. He said, you know, Pastor, they're all rented out. He said, there are people that have been aching for two years, cooped up under COVID, and they want out. They want to be able to celebrate our nation. The people are like ready to do something outdoors, celebratory, have fun, and thank God for the freedoms that we have. So we're doing that. Uh, we got to like the last stage in Georgia, but we got it. And, uh, and we're adding fireworks and we're adding all kind of events to make it happy in a great blues band. We're going to be singing, uh, doing songs that are about our nation, about our freedoms, and about Jesus, who is the source of freedom. And but we're reaching out to all of our neighbors, passing out 20,000 flyers. We're, we're on electronic billboards. We're on uh, social media. And we're just inviting everyone to invite people. It's going to be wonderful. So I want you to put that on your calendar for, number one, praying for the week. But number two, it's about bringing the light of the gospel to our community. But none of this is going to work unless we pray. That's my point. We need to pray against the lies of the enemy and that we're praying that God will bring revelation and touch people's hearts and everything that wants to bring division in our nation would be eliminated and what things that bring unity would come to the fore. Jesus brings forgiveness. Jesus through his blood brings reconciliation between races and between people groups. We need to be the leader as a church in smashing the lies of wokeism, standing for the truth of righteousness and of freedom, and to say I'm proud to be an American is not bad. If they say it's bad, let them say it, but let them say it at another corner of the world. But we don't accept it because it's the, it is a lie. And so we just want you to be a part of it. Engage in the Spirit plug into the Holy Ghost, plug into prayer, and we're going to see America shaken by the power of prayer more than anything else we do. Comments, observations. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry for coughing. So yeah, that's tomorrow um, from 12 to 1, one hour in the sanctuary, and you'll be talking about the different uh, prayer meetings to come. But, uh, you know, it's just an exciting time to be alive. I mean, here we are, it's summer, um, outdoor events we were able to reach out to our community and we're just we're grateful to be able to do that we have uh, the summer fest that's happening oh yeah talk about that I'm across so the street here our, our tent that is up on our property across the street um, this is a fully um, the youth you have done this whole thing they have passed out flyers they every day every they day. spend they spend an hour in prayer and they go out passing out flyers, winning souls. I think they went like 28 29 or 20, yesterday. 29 souls. And so get this. They're preaching at night. They're winning souls during the day. They're praying. And it's hot out there. My son said, I think we should bring him in. I felt like, no, it's missionary training. Most of the world does not live under AC. It's training. If you want to be a missionary, you got to take a little heat. Well, I'm sweating. God made that. That's like a natural cooling system. As long as you hydrate, keep the water going. And uh, so we got tons of ice and tons of water. We're giving our kids, they can get all the water they want. We got a misters. And uh, this time we, got, we have giant four foot flan, fans and we're putting stacks of ice in front of each fan and they'll blow cool air. It's gonna get down to 62 in there. They're gonna have to bring sweaters. But uh, not that cold, but uh, I'm so proud of our youth. I'm sorry, did I, did I shut you down in the middle of what you're saying? That's okay. You said what I was going to say, but that's good. They had a, they're had they having a great time over there tonight, so last night. Yeah. You've got teenagers or youth. You want to send them out. Um, at 6 o'clock, they'd start. They've, they've got games and fellowship. The the service itself starts at 7. Ooh. And you're supposed to turn your phone off when we're yeah. on the thing. No, you don't answer that. Yeah. It was fun. It was fun on vacation. The kids would be like, take the phone <laughs> away. Someone take the phone away from him. But anyway, no, it was fun. So yeah, we're excited to be able to be a part of all of that and to see our young people, they have caught the fire. They're, we're not over there making them do any of this. They're, they're out there on their own. They're winning souls. Uh, we have a team up in York, Pennsylvania right now yeah. that are Our daughter's heading them. Grace Hufton is out there leading the charge. Grace is heading it up. There they are. That's the, that's the first leg of the team. We've got another team, a part of the team going up this Saturday. weekend. And, uh, what and they're, what they're we're doing, going up. 
And what they're doing is... Or I'm going up. <laughs> we has turned to I. <laughs> me. Anyway, what they're doing was is... Was we. They, now it's me. Okay, never mind. Just, you, you close off. Eh? No, go ahead. I cut you off. Go ahead. So who's watching? <laughs> hey, it's always good to see Angie Kristoff. Love you. Chris Hutchings is out there. I saw, I saw Stacy Sheffield. She said that was exactly what she needed to hear on prayer. And uh, just good to see everybody. Dallas Martin, Sue Grimes, Linda Hamani. We love all you guys. And I just want to encourage you. Um, it's true we have to stand long for prayer, but for, for answers sometimes. But there's something that God has for you every single day. Amen. And that he wants you to have a daily expectation. That's something that the yes. Lord's really been dealing with me about is that, yes, I've got answers. They're coming. But God's kingdom wants to come into my life every single day. He wants us to have daily expectation for, for his favor. In you know Psalm 68, 19 says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. Daily. And it's like, I want what God has for me today. I want that loaded benefits for me today. And so many times it's a stepping stone to whatever it is you're believing God for. He does so many things along the way. But I just want to encourage you to, when you get up in the morning, believe God for his mercy. Yes. Thank him for his loving kindness for that day. And he is going to daily load you with benefits and you're going to see it whenever you see it. And claim the favor. Claim the favor. I'm at the right place him, at the right time. Yes. You say that was the favor of God. And so. You know, I just thought about the favor of God to happen today as you're talking about the favor of God. Because I spoke today, Lord, I'll be at the right place at the right time. The favor of God's on my life in Jesus' name. We had to order another container for the field next door because of all the equipment we have. And we purchased them, but they normally take weeks to get. So the expert said it'll be July the 5th. We prefer it like next week, but it's okay, whatever. And the next thing you know, we, we consummated the order this morning and they delivered it this afternoon. That's unbelievable. I mean, it's very believable. That's the wrong words. <laughs> it's very believable because they did it. But that's favor. I mean, I think I said, how come that normally takes weeks? He says, oh, no, it just, it, they were just ready for it. I said, God's a good God. He is. Favor. He's taking care of us. And he's taking care of you. And uh, just be, you know what? One thing I've been telling myself, because I've been confessing that his mercies are new every morning, his loving kindness is new every morning. You know, right around mid-afternoon, I have to remind myself, you know what? There's still mercy available for today. There's still things that God wants to do by the end of the day. He doesn't, he doesn't check out. He doesn't clock out at 4 o'clock. He doesn't clock out at 5 o'clock. He still has something available for you. Even today, this yes. evening, you are going to see God move in your life. Yes and do wonderful things on your behalf. I'm excited. Amen. No, I'm excited, excited. Let's just talk about the other things you've got going on. I think that's on. it. Okay. You got everything? What's this, the re- Oh, if you want to rewatch our podcast, don't forget you can get fed on the go, and you can also go to the websites on YouTube. You can rewatch all the different sermons that are yes. available out there, and just keep yourself fed during the week, and listen to the Word of God, and let it build your faith. Amen. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. But the reverse is true. Faith goes by, by, faith will go, if it comes, it, it can also leave. It can leave you if you're not always getting the input of the Word. Amen. It'll leave you. It'll come, it'll also go. Never forget that. You, so you got to have the coming. The faith's got to keep coming, coming, coming. And if you quit taking it in, it's going to start going, going, going. And the faith you once had could be lowered, mm -hmm. lowered, lowered, lowered. So that's why it's so important that we stay in connection with the Word, with the fellowship of the saints, stay connected to the house of God, stay connected to giving out what God gave you. That's how you stay fresh and stay powerful. Amen. Let's pray for everybody. Well, you're on the roll. Father, we just thank you for everyone who's uh, connected with this body of believers, Lord. We thank you for everyone who's watching right now, those who will be watching later yes, on. God. Father, we just ask a blessing. We just ask, Lord, that your favor rest upon each and every one of them, that they see it, 
Lord, that they see your goodness yes. in the land of the living, even yes. today, Lord, that they see your goodness in yes. their life. They will know that it is you yes. operating on their behalf and you are showing the, your love toward them, Lord. And we just ask a blessing upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just feel like saying this to people out there. Something good is going to happen to you today. Yes. Expect the goodness of God. God has breakthrough for your life. He has not forgotten you. He's coming for you, and He's going to open doors that you're going to step into a new opportunity of His blessing. So be in a state of rejoicing because He is for you. Love you. God Amen. Bless you. God bless you guys. Woo.